What happens to me when my feet feel like glue and they're stuck on the floor? I sometimes cannot walk, but I can dance. I didn't know what to expect, very honestly. Uh, I was willing to give it the old college try, so to speak. I feel like these knee circles are one of my favorite things. Using our knees, walking up the stairs, down the stairs, bending down, maybe even rising up, whatever we're doing. They deserve all the attention, right? I, I got good vibes from the very beginning about the program. In fact, I have said, if anybody will ask, it's, it's the happiest 90 minutes of the week. And I don't think we've missed a class. We have not. In and out. Again, just feeling connected and grounded. It feels like there's a wholeness. Your whole body's moving. Everything's working, whether it is or not. It feels like you're at peace and everything's moving. And it feels like God is present. There's a sense of holiness and wholeness that, you, that I don't have everywhere. But I have it here. And that's why I come back, to have that experience. It's very meaningful. So you're going to open your hands up and close them and open underneath. Little preparation for rehearsal. Feel the warm up. What you need to remember is everything is movement. The least little thing is a movement, you know, telling time, combing your hair, gestures, learning to take them out of that, I'm, I'm gonna use the word fear level, not that they have a fear level, but they, there's a conception that dance is this larger than life training that they would not be able to aspire to. And for this group, you will find people who attend your class who maybe have such limited mobility that a hand gesture could be very tiny and it's very meaningful to them. So you have to change your whole thought about training and what dances in a bigger way and remember that the little things are huge too. And kind of lifting up our toes, pressing your toes into the floor, Spreading those toes nice and wide into the space. Maybe giving it a little swivel, right? As if maybe we're squishing a little bug beneath our feet, right? And they come a, in and they are immersed with the music and the movement and the guided imagery that our lead teachers present them. They don't have to think about anything else but that in the moment. And there's nothing else like that. I see a new energy enter their body. There's a lift, there's a light, that all of a sudden their spine is maybe more elongated. Maybe they're not slouching anymore in their chairs. Their motions maybe are getting a little bit larger. And Dottie on the piano, she's fabulous. She's fantastic. The music is fantastic. It really blends the whole class together. It's smooth, it flows. There's no holes in it. Music is an instantaneous guide, coach, mentor, teacher. It tells you so much in such a short time. And then it doesn't drop you, it doesn't let you go. It travels with you, whatever you're doing. It tells you how to move. I mean, a lot of what we're focusing on in this class is not just the what, you know, do these steps or follow these steps, but how, how are we moving? What movement quality? do we want to manifest here? That is the artistry of movement. That's what makes dance different from exercise, for example, because we're focused on the quality, what we're trying to say with our movement. One of the very key 
facts that scientists have discovered about music and the brain has to do with the tight interconnection between the auditory system and the motor system. There's a way that hearing automatically implies doing that can be harnessed for programs like this. So you're listening to sound, but you might be remembering something that happened to you when you were a kid, or you might be imagining some fictional kind of scenario. Uh, and we're finding that that kind of daydreaming is highly common when people are listening to music. Music also encourages people and dance to attend jointly in time. So to really be tuning in to the same moments uh, together. And there's lots of research showing that this kind of synchrony is really important for how we feel about the people around us and how, how connected we feel. When I have that kind of experience, it multiplies. It doesn't just stay here, it goes with me. I take it with me and it, and it has a relationship with other people I have a relationship with. It's extended, it expands. You're going to take lift and lower, lift, lower, a little higher. If, if there's anything I've learned working at the intersection of a huge cultural phenomenon like music and scientific kind of paradigms and communities, it's that the innovation, in my experience, almost always starts with the artists, the creators, the people doing exciting things with music and seeing what the effects are. The science is kind of following them and trying to catch up with and um, learn from and document some of the amazing things that people are, are finding. So in that respect, this particular program is just a huge leader. As we age, our desire for being creative, for using our imagination, it doesn't, doesn't go away. In fact, in some cases, it gets stronger. And so I think this, this program fills that niche of people really seeking a creative space for themselves, a place where there are only possibilities and not limitations, because so much around them is about limitations. So as Parkinson's subtracts, dance adds them back in, not only the physical, but in terms of an emotional connection, emotional expression, cognitive, work, and maybe biggest of all, the sense of connection, the sense of being part of a group of people, all dealing with similar challenges, but all finding a new way to access deeper meaning and community through movement and dance. Thank you.